Welcome to Radio Films. A voice narrative has been added to this classic film, so you can enjoy this film even if you are sight impaired or otherwise not able to view it. My favorite brunette. Released in 1947. One hour and 27 minutes. From Bob Hope to Dorothy Lamore, with Bob Hope as Ronnie Jackson. Peter Lorre as Keysmet. Lon Chaney as Willie. And John Hoyt as Dr. Lundahl. Produced by Daniel Dare. Directed by Elliot Nugent. The movie begins in San Quentin Prison. Hey, Warden, when's he go? We're taking him down now. Guess that pink slip ain't coming, Warden. Looks bad. How do you think he'll take it? Like a soldier, my boy. Like a soldier. No ketchup? This is the worst last meal I ever had. Sorry, Jackson. Ronnie Jackson is in a prison cell. Oh, sure glad to see you, Warden. So the governor came through with that stay, huh? I knew he would. He's a very good guy. Sorry, Jackson. No word from the governor. Yeah, well, I was sorry. No. No word? Ronnie clutches his heart. He's scared no to death, huh? but he's well, trying to act tough. I don't know who to vote for next time. Come along, Jackson. They arrive in a room with a prison cell and a large metal door. Oh, so that's it, huh? Mind if I take a look? I wouldn't advise it. On the door, there is a flap over a peephole. Ronnie peers into it. Gas. Haven't even put in electricity. Right on here, Jackson. Jackson? I'm going to grant you a special privilege not often given to a man in your position. It's what you've asked for. A chance to tell your story to the newspapers. To get it off your chest. Thanks, Warden. See you in a while, Jackson. A group of reporters are led into the room. Oh, Mr. Jackson, I think you're wonderful. You've really got what it takes. Well, I ain't exactly a cream puff. Cigarette? Never mind. Thanks, George. Might be a saw on that one. Oh. Well, you've got what I call guts. Well, the way I figured... Anybody got a match? Yeah. Hey, uh, the way I figured, if a guy feels in his heart he's taking a phony rap, well, it's not so tough to kick the bucket. It's not so tough to walk that last mile. It's just tough to light a cigarette, that's all. Say, Jackson, how'd you get into this mess? Was it a woman? It's always a woman. You should have seen this woman. Skin like smooth satin, beautiful blue eyes, dark silken hair. Kind of a gal that make you want to give away your last shirt. I borrowed this from the warden. This girl. How'd you meet her? Did she come up to your office? Did you fall in love with her? Wait a minute, one at a time. You may not know this, but I wasn't always a detective. Before they pinned this murder rap on me, I had one of the sweetest little rackets in San Francisco. A legitimate business? Better than legitimate, it was profitable. My office was in the Trafalgar building, just on the edge of... As Ronnie tells his story, the scene shifts no, back right to here. how it began. You know California Street from the hill at Stockton? Yeah. Well, coming down the hill on the cable car, you could just see my office. Third floor front. Ronnie was the name. Ronnie, baby photographer. I'll never forget that day. For two hours, I'd been trying to make that little brat smile. I threw the book at him, every surefire trick... Ronnie holds a rattle in his mouth and shakes his head. Child frowns. Lip noises. Fail. Puffing up cheeks and poking with fingers. Fail. The photo light dies out. This kid's gonna grow up. Ryan sticks his finger into the light and burns his hand. Success. (laughs) Quick, snap it. Watch the birdie. Watch the birdie. There you are. Another masterpiece. Freedom, you're wonderful. 
You're wonderful too, Mr. Jackson. Well, that's because I was a kid once. While myself. Mom turns back, Ronnie pretends double fingered eye poke. I'm just dying to see those proofs. When will they be ready? All the first thing in the morning, Mrs. Fong. Good. And I'm sure you'll like them. Well, goodbye. You little rascal, you. You. Oh. Oh. Child clamps oh, no. teeth on yeah, Ronnie's finger. Time. Oh, Time. No. Time. This is oh. 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 Doesn't he get meat at home? <laughs> you happy little gourmet. <laughs> He's sweet, though. Let me see. Uh huh. Baby photographer. A fine job for a two fisted He Man like Ronnie Jackson. Well, I'd promised to have pictures of the kid ready by morning, so I got to work and develop them. It must have been about 20 minutes later, or a half hour or something like that, when I heard a door slam in the hallway outside. I knew it was Sam McCloud coming back to his office from a busy day pinning the goods on a few assorted crooks and murders. Sam McCloud, the coolest, toughest private eye in the business. You see, I wanted to be a detective. Ronnie too. straps on a pistol and shoulder holster. And, a gun, and I had the gun. I'd figured out a way for Sam to hire me, so I started across the hall. Already, I could see my name in big letters. Ronnie Jackson, Private Eye. What I didn't see was the small print underneath. Rest in peace. Yeah, well, don't worry. If we Sam is at his desk, thing. talking on around, the phone, right. pacing away with his feet up on the windowsill. It'll take more than a couple of hopped-up gunsels with itchy fingers to scare me off. Yeah. Yeah? We'll have to talk that over some rainy night in front of a nice warm fire. I'll bring the matches. Goodbye. What's on your mind, Ronnie? Matches? No, I, I mean, look, Sam. It came today, license and everything. Now can I be your partner? I told you before, stick to watching the birdie and you'll die of old age. Oh, yeah, but I was cut out for this kind of life. All my life I wanted to be a hard-boiled detective like Humphrey Bogart or Dick Powell or even Alan Ladd. Sam puts his feet you know, down and you know, turns around to face office. Ronnie. Sam is Alan Ladd, making a cameo appearance. It, Sam? Sam pours a shot from a half pint on his desk. <laughs> Smooth, huh? Say, I can be a lot of help to you, Sam. Look, here's my latest invention right here. A camera with a keyhole lens. It takes pictures right through doors. I've been kicked out of five hotels already. How about it, Sam? Can I go to work for you? Just give me a simple yes or no. No. Oh, but that's too simple. Why don't you give it a little thought? I'm going to Chicago for a few days. Oh, On his way out, he inspects his gun in one smooth motion. Ronnie tries to mimic him with his gun and fails miserably. I could go with you. I've got a coat just like that. I can help you out quite a bit in case you're running any keyhole worker. You're sure there's nothing I can do for you? Yeah, you can keep your nose clean. That's the last chance I'll give him. Keep my nose clean. Answer the phone. I ought to go in business for myself. Ronnie Jackson, the private eye. I could catch those gunned up hopsles. Over a warm fire, even if it wasn't raining. Drink as much as he can. <laughs> Smooth. Lady enters the room. She walks to a window and pulls down the shade. I suppose you wonder why I act this way. Oh no, every girl who comes in here does that. I need a detective. Please say that you'll help me. Yeah, well look, I'm just... I, please. She pulls him close. Please. Just call me Sam. This is my type of case. He pulls down the other shade. Spill it, sister. My name is Carlotta Monte. Mm -hmm. Baroness Monte. A Baroness? I feel as though someone's watching me. Yeah, that's me. 
Outside the office, a man is listening at the door. Three days ago, in the Queen of Peru, with the Baron, my husband. Oh, you've got a husband. She shows him a newspaper article. It shows a picture of her and a man in a wheelchair. It's titled Baron Monte, Wealthy Demas Landowner, en route to Washington. He hasn't been out of that wheelchair in seven years. You're in trouble. Keep talking. At the dock, I went ahead to clear our luggage through customs. I was gone five, ten minutes at the most. When I returned, he had disappeared. A snatch job, huh? Have you gone to the police? No, no, no. If I go to the police, they'll kill him. Who's they? That's what I want you to find out. Look, I have no money, but this ring can be pawned anywhere for at least five thousand dollars. Oh, look, sister, five grand is a lot of moolah. You don't the have the ring to... is nothing. We Monte is a generous. If you will just find my husband, I will be so grateful. You will see. Yeah, I'll bring the matches. Oh, but this isn't necessary. What's the matter? Listen, they mustn't find me here. Hold on. Well, I don't hear anything. Be at this address as soon as you can. Will five minutes be too soon? They walk down the hall to the corner where the elevator is. We're dealing with dangerous men. The listening man is hiding around the corner. They mustn't know you're a detective. Don't worry your pretty little head about it, honey. I'll find your husband. Fool that I am. Somebody's coming. Guard this map with your life. Yeah, with my life? Carlotta goes down the stairs. Ronnie pulls out his gun and the elevator door opens. He points it at the cleaning lady as she comes out. Oh, I'm sorry. Come in the studio some night after hours, and I'll take your picture when everybody's gone. No charge, <laughs> except for the negatives. Come right in. Prints are down and a half. Anytime. He goes back to his office and looks out the window, just in time to see Carlotta pulling away in a cab, and a black car pulling out right behind it and following it. What are you waiting for? You want to be a detective, don't you? Let me see. What was that address? Oh, the map. My life. He hides the map in one of the paper cups by the water cooler. Smooth. As he walks out the door, he pulls his gun and tries to repeat Sam's gun check move. And he drops his bullets on the floor. Oh. Uh, Ain't this your camera, Ronnie? Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Faye, you don't have to pull no gun on me to kiss me <laughs> any time. <laughs> well, there I was on my own. A missing husband and a dark-eyed dreamboat up to her gorgeous lips in trouble. What a parlay. And oh yeah, that mysterious map. The whole thing just like you'd read it in the detective magazine. I had my car for the address the doll gave me, and it turns out this place is practically a sleeper jump from top. Anyway, later that afternoon, I'm driving through the gates of one of those upper bracket estates down in the peninsula. Pretty soon, I come to another gate. That should have been my cue to put the car in reverse. And then I got a load of the mansion. Oh, what a joint. Must have been something left over from Wuthering Heights. You know, the kind of a house that looks like you can hunt quail in the hallways. I didn't know it then, but I was going to be the quail. As he parks, another car parks adjacent to his. A man with a medical bag gets out and starts walking behind him. It is so beautiful. They are both going to the house. It is day, though. But it's late. 
Sort of. Allow me. Dr. Landau. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Kismet. Ronnie starts to enter. When Baron Kismet, Monte the man who earlier was spying on him at his Pronto. office, stops him. You come in. Pronto. Nice chair for place. What time they bring the mummies out? It's very amusing, sir. Hmm? Madame la Baroness is in her living room. Oh. Shall I announce you? Never mind, I'll take it from here. May I help you with your overcoat? Yeah, pardon, monsieur, your collar. Yeah, I'm roughing you. Kismet offers to straighten Ronnie's collar and does so. Thanks, Cuddles. As Ronnie leaves, we see that Kismet is very deft with his hands. He has managed to lift Ronnie's holster and gun right off his body. Could I ask for more? Each thrill beside you. Miss Monte? Hello. Carlotta is singing and playing the piano. Yeah, it's pretty, but you were so anxious. She signals for him to be quiet. I sigh beside you through the winter storm. For here beside you, I'm forever warm. I'm not feeling daydream. Please, you mustn't. Yeah, better not leave any fingerprints. Listen closely. My uncle, Baron Monte, came to this country. Uh, your uncle? Yes. Yeah, but I thought you said the guy was your husband. Well, I... I had to have your help. I know men. Somehow they always seem to be more interested in the problems of young wives with older husbands. Oh, no. It just seems that way to you. <laughs> Please listen. Mm -hmm. My uncle came to this country on a very important mission. So important that he wouldn't tell anyone about it. Not even me. Mm, your uncle, huh? So he's not your husband. Well, did I quote you any rates? I may work cheaper, you know. Please, not now. Uh, too fast, huh? Okay. Uh, tell me, did your uh, uncle have any enemies? Not that I know of. Uh, huh? And uh, how about this house? Who lives here? It belongs to a Major Simon Montague. He was a former business partner of the Barons. When my uncle disappeared, I, I was frantic. So I called Major Montague, and he offered to help me. Mm-hmm. And what do you know about it? My uncle trusted him implicitly. And still, he treats me like a child. Tells me not to worry. Says that he's handling things. And all the time, I feel as though I'm being watched. She hears Major Monayu at an entranceway and, and quickly so changes her tone. Ever since my arrival. Ooh, getting kind of dark in here, isn't oh. it? Oh. We were just talking about you. Something flattering, I hope. <laughs> Maybe I should have listened to me then. If there's anything warms my heart, it's finding out people like me as much as I like them. I don't believe I've had the honor, sir. Oh, uh, Mr. Craig. Oh, hi, Mr. Craig. Glad to see you. I'm... What? I thought your name was Craig. Yeah, I'm Craig, too. That's quite a coincidence. This I... is Major Montague. I met Mr. Craig on shipboard. Oh. Yeah, I'm still a little seasick. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure knowing you, son. Anything I can do for you while you're in the country, you just speak up. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> Will you have a cigar? No, thanks. I'm driving. I... Craig, Craig. Uh... Where have I heard that name before? Madame, there's a phone call for you. Please take the message. After all, Colotta, it may be important. Yes, you're quite right. Excuse me, Mr. Craig. All right, sir. Now we'll quit playing possum. <laughs> yeah. How do you do, Mr. McLeod? Well, how are you? 
Oh, Craig is the name. Elliot Craig. I was, I was a shipboard and... Oh. Oh, you know the... You're a private detective. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yes. Sam, just call me Sam. And just to show you my heart's in the right place, I'm going to help you do a little detective. Okay. This way, son. Come in, Dad. I may have a little surprise for you. Partners, gentlemen? Certainly. Uh, this is Mr. McLeod. Mr. McLeod, I'd like you to meet... Uh, the man in the picture, Baron Monte. How do you do? Yeah, but she... She said you'd been snatched. You have my word for it, young man. I'm not a mirage. Yeah, but she told me she seemed so... I don't get it. Such a lovely girl. The very flower of young womanhood, too. Perhaps, uh, Dr. Lundahl can tell you about her. I believe you've met the doctor. Oh, yes, we had a long talk outside. Beautiful day, isn't it? I said that. Well, Mr. McLeod, as you perhaps know, it is not the habit of a psychiatrist to put on display the skeletons in anyone's family closet. However, I believe you are entitled to an explanation of the strange behavior of Baron Monte's wife. Wife? But she just told me she was his niece. <laughs> Last week, she was his little sister. It is not funny, Major. For the past six months, Miss Monte has been suffering from an acute form of schizophrenia, accompanied by visual aberrations and increasingly severe paranoid delusions. Mm hmm. And how is she mentally? Our friend Mr. McLeod is a Harvard man. I am not. Fairmount High, Cleveland. <clears throat> Won't you sit here, please? Mm -hmm. I'll, um,. I'll try to simplify the case. Oh, well, make it easy on yourself. I handle all these... <laughs> I... Miss Monte has an obsession that her own life is in danger. And she believes that her uncle, the Baron here, has been kidnapped. Well, gee, I... Uh, I mean, why don't you bring her in here and show her the Baron? Yeah? Yeah, that's what I do. I... I... No, no, senor. It would be too severe a mental shock. It would. My idea is to break down her fear with suggestive therapy. Mm. Well, does she snap her cap very often? I mean, when you invite company for dinner, do you take away her knife and fork? She's only dangerous if she's emotionally disturbed. You must have come across many similar cases in your business, Mr. McLeod. Did you? Oh, oh me? Oh, sure, sure. I could take those schizos or leave them alone, and usually I leave them alone. I figure that with a... Well, I must get back to the office and file some fingernails. I mean, fingerprints. See you then. You know, my heart goes out to that poor unfortunate girl. Her mind is all mixed up. It's downright pitiful. I suppose uh, she even said something about a map, huh? Map? Yeah, she even gave me one to hold for. Mysterious map, missing uncle. Pretty corny. You know, there was something about the way she looked that made me suspicious. The way she looked, I didn't care. But you kept the map. Oh, sure. Why not? She may not have it up here, but... Hubba hubba. Thank you, Kismet. Now, you watch yourself, son. Oh, come in, Carlotta, dear. Nutty as a fruitcake, and with all that beautiful frosting. I was just saying to your friend, Mr. Craig, at any time he's in the neighborhood, he should feel free to drop in and have a julep with us. <laughs> Uh, you all excuse me. Oh, oh, don't go, Major. You know the old saying, three's company and two's a crowd. <laughs> you take care of yourself, son. Yeah. Well, here we are, alone at last. <laughs> Goodbye. Do you know who that phone call was from? Napoleon. Shh. Her schizo's about to frenia. Why did I get up today? I just spoke to my uncle. That's funny. So did I. I. Who? My uncle, Baron Monte. He told me not to worry. But I'm terribly disturbed. Emotionally? Yes. He said he was safe. Oh, he's safe, all right. I mean, he's safe, all right. But he's not safe. I know... Carlotta he's... has a sharp letter opener sure. in her hand but and is I'm waving it around as she danger. talks. Yes, yes. He's in great danger. Yeah, but he's safe, all right. He's safe? You sound like an umpire. 
Don't he you keeps circling a table as she's trying to get closer to him. Call. Someone who wants me to believe that nothing is wrong. Oh, Mr. McLeod, I don't know what to do. I'm at my wit's end. Yeah, I passed there an hour ago. What's the matter with you? Who, me? Here, sister. You better take the ring back. But... But, Mr. McLeod, Sam, you wouldn't desert me. Not now. No, no, I just remembered I got a date with J. Edgar Hoover. <laughs> Kid never makes a move without me. But, I Sam, just, uh, oh. you said we were in this thing together. You said you'd stick with me till your dying breath. Yeah, and I'm getting too close to it. Now, don't get upset, Miss Monte. You just listen to the Major. He's a very fine man. <laughs> and he... he likes you. Oh, so they've been talking to you. They've been telling you things. Oh, you're crazy. I mean, you're being silly. Nobody's been talking to me. I haven't even been talking to myself. I... Oh, yes, they have. They told you something, and you believe them. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm on your side. Oh. So now I know who's at the bottom of all this. Major Simon Montague. Oh, oh. no, no, we're in this together, baby. We're... Please don't believe him, Sam. Huh? Please say you'll help me. Please. Please, baby. Huh? Do it for Mama. Mama knows best. Darling, promise me you'll guard the map with your life. Yeah, the map. I... Map? The map. Yeah. Here, let me take this. Oh. Oh, that... You can open the mailman later. Oh, gee, gee. Six o'clock already. Well, I... Well, so long. Well, I got out of the house and was just starting for my car when I realized me and my gat had parted company, holster and all. I figured little Miss Screwball must have lifted it when she kissed me. I started to go back for it, but I changed my mind. I spot a high window around the corner of the house and decide to climb up and take a gander. I figure the only way to get the inside dope is from the outside. Dope. So I scamper up the hill in about three jumps like any other goat and take a sneak peek. And what do you know? The guy who told me he couldn't walk is out of his wheelchair and sashaying around chipper as a jaybird. Then I knew Carlotta wasn't nuts. I get out my brownie and I'm all set to snap exhibit A when Laughing Boy gets out of his chair and starts for the window. I figure he sees me. But no, he pulls up the shade right in my kisser like it was ladies' night in a Turkish bath. I'm stymied, but only for a second. The keyhole. Here's where my gadget pays off. The greatest invention since the Albany night boat. This'll do it, I says. As Next Ronnie is snapping a picture, Kismet is climbing up the rocks behind him. A knife flies over Ronnie's head and sticks in the window frame. Oh, Carlotta. What am I saying? Uh-huh. Hey, he saw the Baron. He took a picture. A picture. Get that camera for I take the hide off. All right. Ooh. There he goes. Hold it. Close the gates. Both gates. Ronnie's car just makes it through the first gate before it slams shut. He smashes his car through the second gate. Kismet and his man are following. Step on it, Tom! Step on it! After a sharp curve, Ronnie quickly turns off a side road. Kismet passes by. Unfortunately, the side road loops around and now Ronnie is behind Kismet's car. Too fast for him. Hot rod. Lost him. Must have taken the other road. Turn around. They pull off the road and stop and back up to go the other way. Ronnie approaches and pulls up beside them. Hey, you big road hog, why do you... Oh, oh! He realizes it's Kismet's car and takes off. They start shooting and follow. Him. 
It's nighttime now, and Ronnie speeds into the city. Kismet is still on his tail. He shoots out Ronnie's tire. Ronnie pulls over to a curb, parks, and runs down the street into an apartment building. In the lobby, he starts pressing all the apartment intercom buttons. Hello, honey, this is Joe. Hello, honey, this is Joe. Hello, honey, this is Joe. Come on up, Joe. Where have you been? I'm waiting. Hello, honey, this is Joe. Come on up, Joe. Come on up, honey. And Joe, what a man he must be. I've been waiting for you. He spots a back door and exits. Just as he does, a man on the second floor dumps a bucket of liquid out the window, soaking Ronnie. That'll cool you off, Joe. Oh. Later, back in Ronnie's dark room, Ronnie is developing the keyhole picture he took earlier. Think you'd do it after that bath we had? You die, you. He kisses his camera. Like men. He returns to the detective's office. Oh, hello, operator. Get me the state police. Yeah, I'll hang on. As he takes a shot of whiskey, a man comes from off to the side and clubs his head. Plenty he rugged. gets clubbed again. Smooth, He's knocked out with his head over the desk. Kismet arises from behind the desk. Operator? Operator, never mind that call. He finds the keyhole picture and puts it inside his jacket. He finds the negative and burns it in an ashtray. Very thoughtful of you to include the negative. When I came to, I was playing post office with the floor. I had a lump on my head the size of my head. Inside, Toscanini was conducting the anvil course with real blacksmiths. I looked at the bottle of old pile driver and decided to stick the double malts. Then those kids with the hammer started pounding again. But the thumping wasn't in my head. It was somebody knocking on the door. And it wasn't McLeod's door. It was my door. My door in the other room. Oh, it's you. Yes, here I am, Mr. Jackson. My head's... How did they come out? Yanks 4, Cleveland 7. Now, Mr. Jackson, a man of your responsibility shouldn't drink. Well, who's drinking? I. Oh, that, that's a bottle of bean bobber. I want my baby's picture. Yeah. Picture? Oh! Wait a minute. Where are you going? Just a second. Mr. Jackson. Wait. Mr. Jackson. Aha! Uh -huh. They got it. It's gone. It's gone? Now, let me see. I had it in here and I took it in there. Oh, this would have to happen to Sweden. Yeah. No, no, look, Mrs. Fong, it's not your baby's picture. Here's the negative of that. Have it, have it to, uh, printed someplace else, please. Someplace else? Yeah, I'm out of business. I'm retired. But... Remember that if you have another baby, please. Quiet, I'm thinking. Boy, I've got things to do. Yes, sir, important things to do. I... Huh. What have I got to do? Carlotta! Later, Ronnie and some police arrive at Carlotta's house. Kismet, who is dressed as a gardener, approaches them. Hey, there he is. That's the fella. Get him. Watch him. He's one of the gang. All right, what'd you do with the Baron? Come clean, you guns. We mean business. Don't we, fellas? I beg your pardon? What's going on here? Don't try to look so innocent with those blue point eyes. Watch him. He's got a knife. Could have got a knife? Sure, I've got a knife. I'm the gardener. Uh huh? What'd you think I was last night? A chrysanthemum? He tried to prune me. Hold it, bud. Is there anyone living here by the name of, uh... Carlotta Monte. Carlotta Monte. Who is Carlotta Monte? You know who she is. She's staying here with Major Montague. 
Who is Major Montague? Look, this house belongs to the George Crandles. They've been in South America for four months. Six months. Yeah, then he's subletting. You mind if we take a look inside? No, please come along. Pardon me. This way. I'll show you. They're probably all hiding in here. Stick with me. Hey. Hey, what's this? Looks like nobody home. Nothing personal about that, I hope. What do you think, Sarge? I think a rebuke is in order. Oh, now, wait a minute. Don't get your badges in an uproar. You got this all wrong. They fixed my car. They fixed the gate. They fixed everything. That's their racket. They're trying to make people think everybody's crazy. Yeah, but with you, they had a head start. Oh, now, wait a minute. You got to listen to me. You got to trust me, fellas. This is the biggest frame-up since Whistler's mother. Uh, I... Thank you. Wait a minute. Now, keep moving. You got a long drive back to town. Yeah, well, let me tell you something. What? I like long drives. Get going. Okay. And if you bother us again, I'll personally punch you in the nose so hard it'll look like other people's noses. Yeah, well, it might be worth it. Sorry we bothered you. You're not a bad guy, performer. Oh, but I'm going to be a citizen. I'm studying for my examination. Oh, uh, by the way, could you gentlemen tell me who was the eighth president of the United States? So long, bud. As they leave, Major Montague comes around from the side of the house. He's going around to the back. Well, you know what to do. Sure, I know what to do. Not that, you fool. Why did he come back? Why does he want to search the house? He's looking for clues. Clues, huh? <laughs> he wants a clue to call out his whereabouts. See that he finds one. This one. Ronnie climbs up a tree to get to the second floor window. It always looks so easy in those Tarzan pictures. The window is locked, but Kismet sneaks up an arm and unlocks and pushes it open a little. Ronnie enters. He's searching the room. Every place he looks, Kismet sneaks around and tries to place the ring box where Ronnie will find it. But Ronnie always misses it. Kismet is behind a curtain by a lamp desk. Ronnie looks in a drawer and closes it. Kismet opens the drawer and puts in the ring. Ronnie turns back and closes the drawer. Kismet opens it. They do this two or three more times until Ronnie walks away. Ronnie looks in the closet. Kismet puts the ring on the closet floor. Ronnie misses it again. Finally, Kismet puts the ring on the window ledge. Ronnie finally finds it. There's a piece of paper folded up inside the ring. Ronnie opens it. Seacliff Lodge. So that's where she is. Oh, I believe a clue. Ronnie is having a problem lighting the paper with his lighter. While he is distracted, Kismet's hand comes up and starts it on fire. the doll was, my next move is to find her. So I get back into my hot rod special and start out. About an hour later, I spot a sign, Sea Cliff Lodge. So 
I go in to locate the girl, pretending I'm just another guest looking for a little quiet relaxation. The gardener, who is working on the bush below the sign, trims the top, and the full sign reads, Sea Cliff Lodge Sanitarium. Ronnie stops for directions. How do you get to the lodge from here? The, lodge? the golfer and his caddy are at a tee besides the road. Oh, hey, pardon me. Did you notice if a good-looking, dark-haired girl checked in there last night? Whew. Can't talk. Care to play these last three holes? It'll take you right there. Oh, okay, but uh, how about my car? They'll send for it. Oh. Crawford's the name. Oliver J. Crawford. Well, mine's uh, Smithers. Nine iron. Get to shoot first? Okay. Say, this girl last night, did you notice if she was alone? Uh, care to make a small wager? Dollar hole? All right. Say, did you notice if she had a... And yet a full nine. There's water down there. Okay. Ronnie takes a shot. His ball lands on the green about 12 feet past the hole. Missed it. <laughs> Cup must have moved on me. Oh, I feel like a pretty good round today myself. You do? Crawford sets an invisible golf ball in the tee. Then swings. Oh. Lucky I got over those traps. Oh, I didn't see it. On the putting green, Crawford makes an amazing putt with the invisible ball. Right in the cup! I'll concede that. Thanks. For a minute there, I didn't think you had a ball. Don't block, old boy. You're one down. Where's your ball? Right here. Nice lie. Right on the green. Yeah, I can't even see the green. I can. Oh, St. Smithers. Huh? How about that buck you owe me? I owe you? Dollar a hole. Uh-huh. Nice racket you got. Thanks. George Washington. Where? He's staying here, you know. Oh. Got the room next to mine. Uh-huh. Keeps me up all night long playing Yankee Doodle on his fife. Off key. Why don't you tell Petrillo about it? A large man in a white suit Quick, arrives. Let it go. Well, I'm looking for you, chummy. We gonna see the doctor. Doctor? He grabs Ronnie's arm and twists it behind his back. You got me wrong. I'm not crazy. Oh, I know. I know. Maybe you'd like some walnuts, huh? Walnuts? Why don't you grab He places a walnut in his elbow, then lifts his forearm and cracks open the nut. I'll prove it to you. Watch this coordination. Uh, it's the wrong hand. It's... Well, I'll practice a little and see you later. Hey, come on. Easy, that's my pinball hand. We're going to see the doctor. It's no use, but I'm not going with you. Oh, oh, oh. let's see the doctor. Doctor! Oh, oh, oh. Watch out, we'll never get that down again. At the sanitarium, oh, that's Willie lets go of Ronnie's arm. And Ronnie wobbles it around, trying to get the feeling Something back like into it. Permanent. He finally places his hand over the top of a sofa chair and on the head of Kismet, who is sitting there. Welcome to see Cliff. Oh, yeah. Calisthenics? Oh, steady. It's a map. Where's the map? You didn't bring it with you. That's very bad. Uh, look, I didn't expect to see you here. Get me out of this angle. Get... Very bad. Trying to choke somebody? Look, I don't know what's going on here. And I'm not scared, see? You got company, ma'am. Carlotta. Sam. Oh, Sam, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right, baby. Oh, why did I have to go and do this? Now I've got you in this mess, too. Oh, oh Sam. Oh, now, wait a minute. Don't go feminine on me. All right. Don't go masculine, either. Major Montague enters from a steam room, sure. wearing a large towel. Oh, I didn't know this was going to be formal. Oh, I'll be right with you, boss. Come over here and sit down, son. You and I are going to have a little talk. Yeah, I'll do the talking, you do the sitting. <laughs> I'll do the talking. 
Kismet snaps open a switchblade. How to the sitting? The map, Kismet? Didn't have it on him, Simon. No? No. Hmm. That kind of changes things, don't it? Yes, it does change things. Uh, Sam, boy, recently I offered to buy from Baron Monte the mineral rights of a section of his land. Unfortunately, the Baron turned my offer down. He came to this country to make a deal with somebody else. Who is this someone else and what kind of mineral rights? You're getting too inquisitive, son, and that ain't healthy. Now, uh, maybe a little Carlotta here is beginning to see the light. You know, I'm very fond of you, Carlotta, and I don't like to see you holding out on me. Lay off of her, you phony. You, you all. It's a good thing you're here. I'd be brutal. The Baron enters the room in a wheelchair. Carlotta. Uncle Stafford. Are you all right? Yes, child. They haven't hardened me. Hey, is that your uncle? He looks just like the guy in the picture I took. You should have held on to it, son. That picture might have spoiled everything for us. Light, please, Carlotta. Carlotta's now, uncle looks strangely mind, at her and asks for a I light. Acquaint the Baron with a few basic facts. You see, Monsieur Le Baron, we have you. We have your niece. And uh, having Mr. McLeod, we have the map. I'd said you haven't. Yes, but before the chrysanthemum blooms, we will have it. Her uncle gives her back the cigarette Come and asks her to put it away. Stop fooling around, son. I want that map, and I want it now. What you want and what you're going to get are two different things. I'm not the given kind. No, oh. you're not. Oh. Oh. I... Kismet clubs Ronnie's head. Temper, Kismet, temper. Don't be so rough with Sam. He can take it. The poor boy's dazed. He don't know what's going on. Oh, 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 I'm sorry, honey. I didn't mean to get so fresh. I, I, oh, it's you? Oh. Now, where's the map, son? Oh, is that what you want? Well, why didn't you say so? You don't have to get it the hard way. Sam, don't. Oh, what's the use? They'll beat it out of us anyway. We might as well tell them. Go on, chummy. You tell him. All right. I hid the map in a water cooler in my office. Oh, he's lying. I've searched his office. No, you looked in the wrong water cooler. The one I mean is in... Sam. Huh? We might as well tell them the truth. You'll find the map in a water cooler at the ferry building. Yeah. Yeah, in the ferry building. In the water cooler by the newsstand. Third cup from the top. We'll find out. Tony? It should take you about three hours to get to that ferry building and back. Get going, son. Doctor? Uh, better register them as patients. In case uh, they should happen to meet with uh, an accident, the usual papers will be filled out. You see, if uh, Tony doesn't happen to find that map... Carlotta is in a bathrobe in a patient room. She sits on the bed and pulls a cigarette from the top of her hose. A cigarette her uncle gave her. She then gets a bobby pin from her hair and proceeds to open up the cigarette wrapping. There's a note on the inside of the paper saying, C. James Collins, Engineering Facts Corporation. James Collins? Sam. Sam, can you hear me? What's up, baby? That cigarette you saw me take from my uncle. There was a message in it from him. We've two hours to get out of here. Oh, we've got nothing to worry about. Till Tony gets back. You know, they took all my clothes. Mine too. They did? Oh, they did, huh? Say, have you got a hairpin? Sam, this is no time to be thinking about your looks. Here. Oh, good. She passes the bobby pin under the door. Say, how'd you know about that cigarette? Well, my uncle never smokes. So, when he asked me for a light, I... He wants us to get in touch with a James Collins Engineering Facts Corporation. Uh-huh. I've seen this done a thousand times. Who is this James Collins? I don't know. But we've got to find him. It's always so simple. You just put the hairpin in the lock, give it a quick twist, and... Well, come on in. Get up, we can play jacks later. Uh-oh. 
Quick, banish. Quick. Lily enters the room with a tray of food. Oh, it's you. Okay, take me away. Uh, I brought you some grub. Uh, I fixed it all myself. Well, I haven't got much of an appetite. If I could take a long walk. Oh, them there guys wouldn't let you. Oh. You know, show me, I, I like you. Yeah, well, you got a funny way of showing it. I'm still trying to get the corpuscles to move back in. Oh, I'm sorry. You just don't know your own strength. You know, Willie, I like you, too. You do? Yes, sir. What a physique. Boulder Dam with legs. And look at those shoulders and that arm. Mm, like a sack of doorknobs. <laughs> oh, recess, recess, recess. You. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, chummy. Hey, do you care if I feel your muscle, too? No. Go ahead. Look around. It's there someplace. Oh, oh there it is. That's it. Mm. It's just like a woman. Yeah. Easy. 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 Everything you touch turns to rigor mortis. You know, Willie, with your strength, I bet you could take that radiator and just pull it out by the roots and play it like an accordion, huh? Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> or you could even take those bars and just bend them apart, huh? Oh, I don't like to brag. Oh, well, go <laughs> ahead and brag. <laughs> All right. Willie spreads two bars apart in the middle of the oh, that's window. Great, Willie. Gee, you're strong. You want I should tear out the ratty head? Oh, no, no, that's okay. Oh, you've done enough. You're wonderful today. Oh, you're solid spinach. You're great. I'll buy you rabbit later. <laughs> thanks very much. Uh, I'll be seeing you, oh, Tommy. That, 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 Willie pauses by the door and looks back at the window. Realizing something is amiss, he walks back to the window then squeezes the bars back into place. No. You gotta be neat, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You... You... <clears throat> Willie! Did you hear that? Yes. Big detective outsmarted by an imbecile. We've got to get out of here. In two hours, he'll... Yeah, and we're caught like rats in a trap. Well, at least we're a boy rat and a girl rat. They hear someone coming outside the door. So they stand on both sides of the door with their backs to the wall, waiting in ambush. A stucky lady aide arrives at Carlotta's door with a tray of food. Thank you. As she starts a hard right punch to his face, Carlotta knocks her out with the tray. See? I told you there was no use struggling. Come on. No, get the keys. Huh? I'll be your nurse, patient. Oh, great. Here's where I get the new clothes. We better split up when we get downstairs. Meet me in my car. You can't miss it. It's a great convertible job with a horn that goes da 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 da. It's a conservative model. Yes, but suppose they took the keys. Don't need them. There's a trick you can do with the wires. They walk down the stairs to the main floor. Somebody's coming. Act like a nurse. Act like a patient. Yeah. She escorts Ronnie down the hall. <laughs> There, there. Thank you. Oh, nurse. While Ronnie is walking like he has ants in his pants, while moving his head up and down and making strange mutterings. I think I do this too well. Come on. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Wait a minute. Wait. Let's see what's in here. Yeah. There's nothing here but this mangy old piece of moth bait. Looks like. Mine. Yours? Oh, it's pretty, isn't it? We can't use this. Come on. Mr. Crawford, the golfer, pops out of a room. Hiya, stranger. <clears throat> How do you do, my dear? Going around to the pretty nurse, I see. You'll be getting out of here in no time. <clears throat> see you. Yeah. He's one of us. They arrive at an open kitchen area. They back up to the wall right before it. Three branches. 
Kismet is sitting on that side of the room. He throws his knife at a roast on the other side of the room. The three branches of our government are... Gets up, huh? walks to it. The legislative, the executive, and the judicial. Oh. And walks back. What does the As he gets back, Ronnie motions Carlotta to run across to the other side. Huh? huh? It makes the laws. What does the executive Now Ronnie waits for the knife throw and times his run across the opening. Just as he does, Mr. Crawford appears behind him and pushes him forward. Kismet starts throwing his knife at the pair as they back up to a wall. He throws three knives at them. The knives end up on both sides and above their heads. Look, I was... I was... Come here, you coward. Look, you can get in trouble if you... Oh. Why, you... Honey dirty... pulls a knife from the wall and throws it at Kismet. Kismet nonchalantly catches it. Now he's holding a knife over his head and walking towards Ronnie. Just as Kismet is about to stab him, Willie throws the roast to Ronnie. Ronnie raises it and Kismet sinks it deep in the roast. Ronnie takes off, and they chase after him. Hey, Willie, you go that way. They're outside looking everywhere for him. Hey, uh, I won't see him. Pan out, Willie. Let's search the woods. Pan out. Over in Ronnie's car, Carlotta is slumped down in the front seat. <sighs> Friend. Quietly, Ronnie gets in the car. You just couldn't stand the details, baby. I just hope I didn't slug him too hard. It's a good thing we're downhill. Yeah. I'll release the brake. The car starts rolling down the incline. What are you doing now? I'll show you that trick with the wires. You don't need a key. It's great. Ronnie jumps the wire and starts the car. Kismet and Willie hear the racket. Kismet goes up to a guard and takes his gun. and starts firing at the car. You do better with your knife. Shut up. What happened? Hey, I'm driving. <laughs> I'll take it through here. It gets a little rough. Thanks. As soon as we get to the city, we'll call Mr. Collins. Or better yet, we'll go to your office and get the map, and then we'll go... Hold it, hold it. What's the matter? I got news for you, Miss Monte. I'm bowing out. But, Sam, you can't. I'm forcing myself. This kind of life is too rich for my blood. A little I got left. I'll get you the map, and then we'll call it quits. Tell me, Mr. McLeod, are you always afraid of old men with phony southern accents? Wait a minute. What do I owe you? All I know is you came into my office with a phony story and a ring, and now I ain't got the ring, and I'm stuck with the story. Put this top up. It's going to rain. It never rains at this time of the year. Orange juice. Back at Ronnie's office hallway. Ronnie Jackson, photographer for babies. Yeah, that's me. Well, where's Sam McCloud? He's out of town, which is a tough break for all of us, except him. So you've been playing detective. Yeah, and I'm through playing, sister. The last 24 hours, I've been knocked out, shot at, beaten up, knocked out again, and put through the ringer. And if I'm still alive, it's only because the insurance company doesn't want to give up. They're afraid it would break them. Here. Here's your map, Miss Monte. The right water cooler, but the wrong office. Goodbye. All right. Goodbye, Sam. I mean, Mr. Jackson. Goodbye. And I don't mean see you later. So long, sister. <coughs> Wait a minute. You can't go out like that. You're soaked to the skin. I'll manage. Oh, steady. Why do women always act like women? Here, here are a few things. Whose things? Mine. Pick out what you need. The ones with the lace are still at the laundry. Well, may I change? No, it's my room. Over here, behind the screen. 
you're not a detective, you act like one. Well, I ain't exactly a cream puff, sister. Guy could use water wings in this business. Oh, Ronnie. Yeah? I just wanted you to know, I'm not really angry with you. Why not? I'm very grateful for all you've done for me. Even if you were Sam McCloud, you couldn't have accomplished more. Look, don't red apple me. From now on, I'm gonna stick to watch the birdie and leave the chicks alone. Ronnie? Yeah? I think you're a very brave man. I know a sniveling coward when I see one. He looks in a mirror. Hiya, Snib. But I've no one else to turn to. Won't you help me? No. Please. Oh, no, you don't. What kind of a sucker do you take me for? Just because you're a girl and I'm a boy and you're throwing those big blue eyes at me and you let me put my arms around you and you let me hold you close, even closer. You think you can get me to do anything you want? He kisses her. What do you want, baby? Darling, the first thing we've got to do... We're doing it. We've got to find James Collins. Collins? Yeah. No, no, we got to get out of here. This is the first place those characters will look. I don't want that cuddles playing mumbly peg on my throat. Take those off. What? Uh, I mean, put this on. Oh, here. no, I better roll with this up first. Where's my hat? Oh, it's you, Mrs. Fong. Mr. Jackson, stop I'm, pushing me. I'm sorry. Hurry. Mr. Jackson, mm -hmm. I'm very disappointed in you. Yeah, I know. You take a picture of Sonny fighting for the first time in his life. And then you gave me the wrong... Yeah, well, don't worry about a thing, Mrs. Fong. I'll give you your money back. Hurry. But I don't want my money back. I want a picture of Sonny fighting for the first time yeah, in his life. Shh. Here they come. Hurry. Hurry up. Come on. Let's go while we're still here. Don't worry about a thing. I'll send you a check. But you gave me the wrong negative. She holds up the keyhole picture. Nearby, Kismet exits the elevator, pauses, then continues down the hall. Well, our next move is to contact Mr. James Collins. His secretary said he had a date that night at a spot called the Poulet Door. From here in, we had no worries. Montague and his cute little playmates, they were washed up through, lost in the shuffle. Well, Poulet Door was our next stop, but we didn't look exactly like cafe society, so I blew the bankroll, a rented tuxedo for myself and an evening gown for Carlotta. Boy, did she stack up. Uh, I guess you only get out of the thing what you put into it. An hour later, we were at the Poulet Door, one of those real swanky cafes where they eat mink for breakfast. Just a moment. Mr. Collins' table, he's expecting us. Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Collins. He's right there by the window. Collins is sitting at a table with a blonde lady. Oh, yes. Yes, there he is. Hey, George. This way, please. Ah, uh, just a minute, bud. Look, here's a Finn. Tell that blonde at that table over there she's wanted on the phone. Pronto? Certainly, sir. Let's move in. Pardon me, sir. You wanted on the telephone, miss. You'll excuse me. Oh, Mr. Collins, we'd like to speak to you for a minute. I don't believe I've had to sit down. Start talking, baby. My name is Carlotta Monte. My uncle is Baron Monte. Baron Monte? I don't think I've ever... My uncle told us to get in touch with you. I'm sorry. I'm afraid you have the wrong man. Wait up. My check, please. Does this map mean anything to you? Where is the baron? Henry! The waiter said you had a phone call for me. I will check it for you, madam. The baron had an important appointment this Wednesday afternoon in Washington. Washington? In his office at the Pilgrim Hotel. Pilgrim Hotel? Someone must keep that appointment. Someone will, but it won't be the right Baron Monte. Right. Our first move is to get the local police. That's it. No, you stay here, Miss Monte. Yeah, you stay here. These men are killers. Yeah, then I'll stay here, too. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, okay. If we're not back in 45 minutes, call the police. All of them. Check. The 10th Precinct Police Station is the closest. 
Good. We'll call from there. But the sooner we get this into the hands of the FBI, the better. FBI? Madame Monte's appointment in Washington Wednesday was with the State Department. Boy, this thing is dynamite. Look, Mr. Collins, just how do you figure in this deal? I'm a geologist. I work with Madame Monte in San Dimas. In fact, I drew up this map for him. It shows the location of a great deposit of cryolite. Well, I don't see anything. It's in code. Oh. Yesterday morning, I got a phone call. A voice exactly like Baron Monte's. Whoever it was said that there had been a change in plans, that the land was no longer for sale. Do you realize what that means? Well, not exactly. It means that somebody, some other government perhaps, is after that cryolite. Mm-hmm. They park in front of a police station. Cryolite, huh? Well, we can't let them get it. <laughs> What's cryolite? Cryolite. It's an ore containing cryptobar. Cryptobar? Oh, well, we can't let them get that. What's cryptobar? A source of uranium. Yeah, and what? Uranium! Oh, well, Kismet's now head I slowly I rises like from the back seat. Uranium. A gunshot rings out. Collins slumps back in his seat. Must be that right front. Come on. Ronnie leaves the car, not realizing that Collins has been shot dead. Kismet reaches over the seat and removes the map from Collins's pocket. Come on. Then drops Ronnie's gun on the front seat. Hey. Hey, Mr. Collins, we're here. Co Mr. Collins. Mi Mr. What? Blood. And it ain't mine, it's red. Oh. Keep, keep cool, Ronnie. Ronnie, keep cool. The murder weapon. Yeah. Pardon me. Uh huh? Find the owner of this gun and you got the killer. Yeah. Yeah, it's mine. Yeah, my, my gun. My gun. Oh. Yeah, it's got my fingerprints on it. I, shh, I, shh. A platoon of police exit the station. I'm going home and hit the hay. I just don't go for any blind dates. I'd rather be caught dead. I'd rather be caught. Well, okay, call her up. Call her up. We Hey, you. Who, me? You don't expect to get away with this, do you? But I tell you, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Of course you didn't do it. This fire hydrant just sneaked up on you, huh? Oh, that. Oh, yeah. Let me see your driver's license. Yeah, but you got me all wrong, officer. This isn't my car. Oh, it isn't, huh? No, I don't drive. I drink a lot. I get nosebleeds and... Then what are you doing here? Well, I was just cleaning. I, I... Trying to roll that drunk, huh? Oh, no, I wouldn't think of it. How far could I roll him? Besides, some of my best friends are drunks. I, I was just... Well, I've got to go now. It's been fun. <laughs> Not too fast. It looks suspicious. So long. It's been fun. Stop saying that. Well, goodbye now. I, I got to run now. I... Say, hey, fella. Hey. Hey, stop or I'll shoot. Ronnie well, runs away down an alley. Care of him. He's a real help to us, that boy. What about the girl? Oh, that is no problem. We have the map. When I told Carlotta they'd rubbed out Collins, it was quite a blow. But the kid bounced back like a rubber ball. A nice, soft rubber ball. Too bad I wasn't in the mood to play catch. Newspaper headline. Baby now. photographer Robert sought Jackson in daring Collins murder. Well, if we were going to save the doll's uncle and Mrs. Jackson's boy, Ronnie, we had to get something on that gang. That meant our next stop had to be Washington. But we needed dough to get there, and little Carlotta came through. We got the last two seats on a plane headed east, and by midnight, we were playing tag with the Rockies. Carlotta was very sweet. She looked after me like a mother. I guess she wanted to make sure I didn't get away. And for a disguise, I was wearing a 10 o'clock shadow. I had to play cage. Ronnie is wearing sunglasses and a large arms. fake beard. I knew it would get me. I get air sick when I step on a thick carpet. We hit Washington about noon the next day, and we grabbed a cab for the Pilgrim Hotel. Now this was the end of the ride, the payoff. Ronnie Jackson versus Mint Julep Montague. My brain pitted against his. Yeah, he had the brain and I had the pit. He's removed the beard, but still has the sunglasses. Suppose they haven't got a room near my uncle's suite. You just toss that smile at him, honey, and he'll give us the joint. Thanks, Ronnie. 
Look. It's nice to see you again, Baron. Thank you. They see the Baron being wheeled to the elevator. I guess old Short and Brad joins him later. I'll see about that room. Say, Bud, we'd like to talk to you about... One moment, please. Can you tell me the number of Baron Monte Street? Sorry, he's out of town. Oh, I'm uh, Mr. Dawson of the State Department. Oh, yes. He's expecting you. Suite 14C. Thank you. Yes? Oh, oh, we'd like a room, please. Something on the 14th floor. Sorry, we haven't a thing. Say, what about those rooms for Hennessy and Mackay? And Kelly. And Schultz. Oh, yes. Uh, Will you please register? Uh, I thought you said you didn't have a room. Well, you see, if you were with the convention, I could probably... Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. We're with the convention. <laughs> well, you certainly don't look like a detective. <laughs> well, as a... Uh... Ronnie sees a sign reading, Today's Events, Police Detectives Benevolent League. Oh. Well, I'm not exactly a detective. I'm more of a stool pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> They're at the other hotel, so you know, I thought... Well, look at... He glances down at a newspaper and sees his picture in a still-at-large article. He well, flips the paper over. It must be awful, boy. chitty old, pip-pip, tap hole, and all that sort of rot. Come, Deborah, come. Yes, we mustn't be late for tea. No, oh, I hate soggy crumpets, you know. Yes, so do I. Well, step up, huh? Goodbye, Jeff. Read all about it. Get your latest. Read all about it. Police capture killer. They got me. New York gang slayer jail. It's a New York murder he's yelling about. Oh, yeah, sure, and I'm just a San Francisco murderer. <laughs> I don't know how much more of this I can take. You've had me in hot water so long, I feel like a tea bag. Well, why don't you quit? I can take it from here. Oh, sure, now that you got me over a barrel, now that I'm wanted for murder. For murder. You want me to quit, huh? Well, let me... They see a hotel help wanted sign. Hey, did you hear that bell ringing? What bell? It just rang for ice water in 14C. And who do you think is going to bring it up? Me. I'm my chambermaid. At the hotel, Ronnie exits an employee elevator at the 14th floor. He is carrying a tray, a pitcher, and is dressed as a bellboy. He walks down the hall and sees the State Department hey. man hey, enter a room. Bring us back. Mr. The door closes. Nearby, the elevator door opens. Hey, boy. Give me a hand with these bags. No, but this ice water, there's a blonde in 14A who's on fire. Cut the comedy and get these bags. This is an emergency, she says. Come on. Okay, slave driver. Don't push me around. My dues are paid too, you know. All right, Tony. Let's go. Oh, boy. You. Yeah? Uh, that portfolio. The uh, office is in there, Simon. Yeah, they put the bags in that room and the portfolio in the office. Uh-huh. Ronnie picks up the briefcase and carries it on his shoulder, blocking his face, into the office room. Nice having you with us again, Baron Monte. Will you be in Washington? In the office, Carlotta, dressed as a maid, is hiding behind a large drape. She reveals herself to Ronnie and signals for him to be quiet. She motions for him to leave the briefcase and that she will search it. Ronnie walks out of the office and through the outer room, rubbing a handkerchief on his forehead in order to hide his face. Will that be all, sir? That's all, thank you. And uh, the other boy, uh, uh, just a minute, young man. Give this to your friend. Oh, thank you, sir. Hey. Okay, sucker. Ronnie comes out of the stairwell door. He goes back to the room and peeks through the keyhole. He sees the Major and his conspirators laughing as they walk off into an adjoining room. He opens the door and walks in. and ducks into a nearby closet when he hears somebody at the front door. It's the doctor and Willie. Baron's a stubborn old man. He 
still hasn't talked. He, he pretends he doesn't know the code. They all go into another room, except for Willie, who is sitting on the edge of a table by the closet door. Ronnie opens the closet door, bumping into Willie. Well, if it ain't Johnny. Shh. Look, Willie. We're friends, pals, remember? Sure. I like you. Here, let's go tell the fellas. No, here. no, Willie, no. They'd ruin everything. Shh, we're friends. Let's be alone. Here, have some walnuts. Uh, are them yours? Yeah, slip this into your pocket. Gee, thanks. Hey. Some more. You know, I, I like walnuts better than almost anything. Shh. Them coconuts. Coconuts, yes. I hate them. Because they, they don't fit in here. And they will soon. Just forget that you ever saw me. I'll bring you some lychee nuts. You can crack them with your eyelids. They're more fun. You're a pal. Goodbye. Why do I do this? Goodbye, Willie. Willie pretends to crack nuts with his eyelids then goes into the other room. Ronnie comes back in the door. Hey, you know who I just seen? Shh. At least. The part that's in cold. Shh, quiet. What are you doing? Cracking nuts. <laughs> Guess who gave them to me? Oh, sit down. He, he was right out. Stop interrupting. But I just want to... Shut up. Well, that ain't no nice way to talk to a person. All right, just for that, I'll keep quiet. Ronnie is back in the office. Any luck? Oh! Don't you look a little thin? Anything in the portfolio? Just this. They're too smart to put anything on paper. Uh huh. I'd go out in there. She hands him a gun. So messy. I've looked all through the filing cabinet. Uh -huh. We gotta get something on the baby or we're dead ducks. We gotta get something on the baby or we're dead ducks. Yeah, I said that. They notice a fancy phonograph recording device under the desk. What is it? That's a recording machine that repeats what you say. You know, for a guy too fat to hold a secretary in his lap. Do you know how to work it? Sure, you just speak into this mic and make a record. That's it. That's what? You work the machine, I'll get them to talk. This is one of the best ideas I ever had. Marvelous what you can do when you think. Okay, lead him in. What was that? I don't know. He came from in there. A chambermaid now, huh? You see, she's dangerous. We've got to get rid of her. Oh, let her go, Kismet. We don't want any trouble here. But that's no trouble. I put her in a trunk and sent her to my brother in California. I said let her go. Uh -huh. All right, boys. We'll handle this. Uh, sit down, Carlotta. Sit down. Sit down. Whatever happened to your friend, uh, what was his name, Mr. Jackson? That fool. That imbecile. He never knew when to keep his mouth shut. You were too smart for him. Now I'm alone and too weak to fight any longer. Well, there's really nothing to fight about, honey. Yeah, I'll show you what I mean. Carter, I once made you a mighty generous offer concerning this. Ronnie is under the desk, monitoring the recorder. The map? Yes, the map. Now, I'm repeating that offer. Uh, there seems to be something missing here. The code. You get me the code to the uranium deposits in Sam Dimas, and I'll let you both go. You mean my uncle and me? Yes. I see. Otherwise? Well, you know what we did to Mr. Collins. Ronnie's jacket catches the electric cord and pulls it out of the socket. Always belittling me. When I do a job, I do it. I don't think we ought to... He signals to Carlotta that he's putting back in the plug. All right. Well, I... I've got to think it over for a minute. It's a very big decision. I don't like to be kept waiting, girl. No, we don't. Did you hear me, Carlotta? Well, did you really kill Mr. Collins? Well, who do you think did it? 
that baby photographer, that, that photo nice is smiling until he sees that the cord is unplugged again. Job, an artistic job, and she thinks an amateur did it. Yes, yes. Stop taking bows. I'm not taking any bows. I'm still waiting, Carlotta. He plugs it back in again and gives Carlotta the high sign. Kismet, I can't believe that you killed Mr. Collins. But I did! I killed him! I killed him! I killed him! How often do I have to say? That does it. That does it. Stick him up. Stick him up. Ah. <laughs> Easy, Cuddles. One move and you're a dead midget. Didn't recognize me, huh? Give me that map. Come here, baby. You're liable to be in a crossfire. Now, get your friends in here. Hurry up or I'll fill you so full of holes you look like a fat clarinet. Come on, get him in here. Get back there. Make it snappy. Nice work, baby. All right, boys. You can come in now. Come on. All right, yeah. Come on. Easy does it, fellas. I got a bullet in here for each of you. And one left over in case I can still hear breathing. You know those dicks downstairs? Tell them I'm giving a little party in 14C. Hurry. You'll be all right? All right, this is my type of work. Uh, line up against the wall. Hurry up, I got you covered. Back up, all of you. I said back up. Okay, then I'll back up. Now, come on, fellas, be sensible. Alicia, you do it. Put your hands on it. Aha! Aha! Why did I think of that before? Uh, huh. See this record? It's a little swing number. You guys are gonna do the swinging. Willie. What about Willie? <laughs> Give it to me, Charlie. Daddy Walnut. Smith jumps forward and kicks the gun from Ronnie's hand. It flies out the window. Ronnie kicks him. Runs out of the office. Get that record. Get after him. Look, get that record. Look, you come once. They chase Ronnie around the room. Break this record into a thousand pieces. Ronnie Inside ends up on the top of a couch. Please, I can't go any higher than the ceiling. Billy I'm grabs him by the legs and walks him to the center of the room, where Ronnie grabs hold of the chandelier and starts swinging on it. He finds a bottle inside the chandelier and smashes Willie on the head with the bottle. They both collapse to the floor. Carlotta arrives with some police detectives. Oh boy, am I glad to see you. Arrest that man. He's a crook and a murderer. They're all murderers. Hold Are you all right? Oh, yeah, thanks. You got here just in time. What is this? Why, the young fellow's a little mixed up, officer. I want you all to meet Ronnie Jackson, who's wanted by the state of California for the murder of one James Collins. Oh. Just a minute. You listen to that record, and you'll see who killed James Collins. Yeah, get the record, and we'll play it. Who's, who locked the door? Oh, oh. <laughs> here, come watch. Listen to this. Come here. Stay here, Jim. Yes, sir. He's mad. Kismet quietly grabs a record from a stand, puts it on a magazine, then under his arm. Kismet sneaks around Ronnie and makes a switch. Recording machine. Need any help? Give me that record. Back away, Gremlin. All right. Gentlemen, the record you're about to hear not only clears me of a murder charge, but also exposes a tremendous international conspiracy. A conspiracy, gentlemen, which seeks to destroy civilization. Listen. He says murder, he says. Every time we chance, he says murder, he says. At a time like this, he says murder, he says. Is that the language of murder? No, this isn't the record. I've been framed. They switched the records on. Come on, but they, No, wait a minute. Stiff, uh, uh, just a minute. Before you take him away, uh, in that pocket, he has something that uh, belongs to me. Give me that map. But it's not his. It's Baron Montes. Ask her. Ask Carlotta. Carlotta. Sure. Carlotta. Carlotta! Let's go, killer. Yeah. Back at death row. Well, that's about it. You know the rest. Quick trial. Carlotta never showing up. Nice deal. Winner. Hey! That reminds me. Yeah, we're late. You're late. In about five minutes, I'll be the late Ronnie Jackson. We get tickets for this thing. Oh, my. Remember, I'm doing this without a rehearsal. Yeah. Is that too tight? Can you breathe? What's the difference? What is this thing, Doc? That is the stethoscope. Yeah. Stethoscope? Still feeding it. Well, hello, Warden. Any news from the governor? 
Open up. Come here, son. You and I are going to take a little walk. Steady, Jackson. If you can take it. Ronnie stumbles and passes out. He awakes in a room. A doctor is giving him smelling salts. Baron Monte is there, and so is the warden. You look alive. Yes. Where are we? Well, look. Carlotta. Carlotta. You double-crosser. Why didn't you come to my trial? Where have you been? Ronnie, Ronnie, you're free. I should... I'm free? Oh, who did it? You did, with your own little keyhole camera. Look, Sam got this from Mrs. Fong, and he claims the rest was just routine. My keyhole shot of the phony Baron. So you're the McCoy. Young man, I want to thank you for saving my life. Oh, it was nothing. And I did it. I knew I had it in me. Hey, maybe I was supposed to be a detective, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Ronnie Jackson, the private eye. No, Ronnie, no. I think you'd better stick to taking baby pictures. Oh, I forgot to tell the executioner. It's all off. Harry! It's all off. Harry is played by Bing Crosby, making a cameo appearance. Yes. He's disappointed that he can't do the execution. He throws his head on the ground and stomps off. Well, he'll take any kind of a part. Ronnie and Carlotta kiss. 